train. I mean, it's, train. <laughs> it's. I guess that was a good enough answer. Yeah. So I mean, Spear Tracks. I still haven't even finished it. Spear mm -hmm. Tracks um, is a Zelda game because it follows the Zelda formula. Right. Um, it Hy just Hyrule adds. Warriors is not a Zelda game. No, it is not. It's awesome. It's a Dynasty it's Warriors, Warriors game with, with Zelda skins. Yes. <laughs> it actually says out in the back of the box. Is that a bad thing? No. No. It's not a no. bad thing. It's like, like Gundam. It's like Tekken Gundam's with Dynasty the. Warriors. It's like playing Tekken with. Uh, all those M Nintendo skins. It's like most fighting games that came out for the SNES that were just Street Fighter 2 clones. <laughs> oh, gosh. Fighting games, old, like, 16-bit fighting games are so good. They're fun. Like, there's very few actual fighting game franchises now, I feel like. What are the big you, ones? You've got Mortal Kombat, Soul Calibur... Smash Bros. Uh, Smash Bros, I guess. Is Smash Bros a fighting Smash game? Smash Bros is a weird one. <laughs> Smash Bros. is like... It's sort of like... It's like how Mario Kart is considered a racing game. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's a really good Like, analogy. it's a little bit more simplified and equalized than more skill-based games of that genre. A fighting game for me I mean, is 2D, so not necessarily Soul Calibur. Mm -hmm. Or Tekken. I feel like 3D fighting games are just kind of... <laughs> There's a fighting too many game. things to worry about in terms of like your positioning and movement. A fighting game, focus. to me, is a game where there is multiplayer, and multiplayer is like mm -hmm. the focus, mm -hmm. and the goal of the game is to beat the crap out of someone. Yeah. I mean, well then that would include I have pretty everything. simplistic like a one on, I feel like a one-on-one -on -one fight where the combat system is meticulously detailed, with yeah, right. very unique movesets for each character. Well, I mean, yeah. to l label a game with a genre can be kind of subjective. Because, like, I would consider Zelda games adventure games with a little bit of action here and there, but some people call them just action-adventure. They're mainly a RPG. adventure games. Action-adventure is such a weird term, though. It fits almost everything. Like, that's kind yeah. of... Because there's action and, hopefully, adventure in most of the games you play. And I feel... I don't know. What's that's, an action game that's not an adventure game? Uh... Do um... <laughs> there's yeah. one. You don't really have an adventure, you're just like, I'm gonna kill more aliens, and I'm gonna have a fun time doing it, and you can't tell me what to do. Devil Fall. May Cry? Devil May Cry is an adventure game. Kind of. It's got a narrative. What Devil May Cry are you talking about? Are you talking about, like, I don't know. I've only PS2 played ones, or it's DMC? I've only played, played everybody hates. The, the, I've only played the one that everybody game. hates. The, the dark-haired Dante. I love that one, though. <laughs> me too. It's, I tried playing the old ones, but like, this has a better combat system. Maybe the, the old ones. Maybe the reason I like it is because it's the only one I played. But it's I don't so, know. But it's so good. It the combat flows so well in that game. As I said before, though, it's awesome. If I ever don't like a game, it's because I either haven't played it or it's a genre I don't care about. Okay, before I move away from this screen right here to look up the review for DMC, um, Shadow Shadow got a nine point seven from IGN. That was back when they had their one hundred point grading scale. Oh man. <laughs> Don't they still do Those are the No, they have a 20 point right now. Oh, interesting. Um, 9.5 on presentation, 9 on graphics. Not the best frame rate we've ever seen. This is the original PS2 version. Oh, this is Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah. I almost thought you said Shadow the Hedgehog. Not yeah, the I was presentation. <laughs> not, not the best frame rate. We we've love the ever part seen. where you go to kill the president. No, yeah. kill the president! <laughs> Heterochromatic you gotta president. Shoot Eggman in the face. Yeah. I can't, he's too strong. But the art direction and animation are absolutely phenomenal. A 10 for sound. The effects are light but nearly perfect. The score is virtually unmatched. Oh, I have oh, the yeah. score on my iPod. I do too. It's so good. Uh, 10 <laughs> gameplay. Ugh, I don't know about that. Gameplay. Yeah. I don't know if I would call it 10. I call most, it at least a 9. One of the most, of the most, of the most original <laughs> Am I making games you mad we've... by referencing your games? <laughs> no, I'm just trying to talk in your... <laughs> one of the most original games we've seen in a long time is also one of the best games on PS2 combining elements of puzzle solving, adventure, and action. This is gaming bliss. Let's be honest, it was The Last of Us for its time. Where like, if you think, what was what was the great send off for this console? Shout of the Colossus for the PS2. Oh yeah. Last of Us for the PS3. Like, Interesting. they have some really amazing send offs when the console generation ends, like it's nuts. Because they both push like the graphics fidelity and like they push the systems to their limits. With each of those games. Yeah, the Uncharted 3 was one of those, I think. Yeah, one of those mm. too. Uncharted 3 holds up pretty dang well. Um, Skyward Sword for the Wii. Oh, yeah. Everyone's Love lips Skyward look Sword. like Angelina Jolie lips. What? In Skyward Sword? Are, in Skyward Sword. Oh, all of the characters. Their lips are so puffy. It's like Angelina That's Jolie. Nice. 
uh, a nine for lasting oh. appeal. It's so good you'll pick it up again down the road, like a great movie. Plus, there's plenty of stuff to grab and places to explore after you're done. Like, the only thing that I heard that was really a gripe with it is that the, if you're looking for a game that's really long, it's kind of short. What, Shadow? Yeah. Interesting. Because, like, you, there's 16 bosses. I feel like that's a long enough length. But yeah, there, were, yeah. there were some people that were like, if you're looking for something that's longevity, it doesn't really have that. I think... You have if, a time attack mode, and that's kind of it. If anything, my beef with Shadow, and I could probably see this being other people's beef with it, is... There's always, like, that one Colossus, you know? Like, that one level that... What would be the one Colossus in that game? The one Colossus that... I mean, it might be different for everyone. Hates. But uh, for me, it's definitely the one where you have to push him back with the torch. I think, yeah, yeah. That, that one phoned it in a bit. Because <laughs> that one, I just hated, like, the fact that I got on his back, and he moved all the time, and I couldn't stab him. Like, and even just, then, that, that was a that down... Like, that's a downside that wasn't really... That bad. It got made right. up for when you had to fight the giant flying colossus on horseback. That was awesome. So. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think the one that phones it in for me is, I think it's like the third to last one, the the lion thing that you have to traverse the, you have to like stand on top of the pillar. Okay, oh, yeah. that was lame. That was, <laughs> like why? Because if you mess up what? at the very end, you have to do it all or. Anything. Yeah, like it took me forever. Like, what am I supposed to even yeah. do? I thought that one was easy. <laughs> I couldn't figure That's out that one for a while. Like there were some, there were some like standout colossi that you're always gonna remember. You're gonna remember the ones that weren't humanoid looking ones, like the, the flying bird. one, the bird. The bird's oh, bird. the bird! It's the fifth one. It's I my think favorite one. That one, uh, the first one, the I'm, third one, because the third one is massive. I'm one awesome. of, I'm one of those people who says like the last one has to be my favorite. So the it is third one. The last. But one. I love how the last one isn't even the biggest. The last one yeah. is, it's just a tower. It's just a dude. <laughs> a tower of a tower. death. Well, I just love how the last one, it feels like a good final boss, because it's like, hey, you want to come to me? Too bad. Boom! I think and a lot of that comes with, like, the, face. the presentation, too. Just the music of the last boss. Yeah, like, it feels like the wow. end, you know? Yeah, it does a very good job of making it. you feel like this is the final one. And when you kill this, your girlfriend will be alive, supposedly. And yeah. your soul is gone. <laughs> Spoilers for a... Oh, oh yeah, I finished it, right? When did that come out? <laughs> when did... Oh, I should look that up. DMC... Hold on. DMC... Uh, shoot. Definitive Edition got an 8.9. Definitive I kind of want to get, but I don't see a reason to right now. Well, isn't that like the conversation we had earlier about why you would get an HD remake? Like, this one like, I can kind of see why, because like it's it's got a 60 second frame rate, and that definitely would make a difference, but I was fine with the 30. I mean, it does have an adult's frame rate now, but... I'll just probably get it on PC if I want that. Because I could probably oh, yeah. it. And it comes with the DLC that people said was alright. I love... Like, so, I mean, I don't see a great reason to pick it up, except for PC, probably. I love when I play a game that doesn't have such a great frame rate, and then I go play a game with 60 FPS. It's <laughs> like... It's so <laughs> jarring. It's like waking up. It's like just playing Dark Souls huh. 2, PC, and then playing it on the console. Because on consoles, it's like, I can hold 30, and some places I get 60 FPS if you're looking at a corner of a room. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. cool. Then you go on like, PC, it's like, I can run 60 all the way! And you're like, ooh! Like an in Infamous, it's like, it's 60 as long as you're looking at the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Shadow of the Colossus for PS2 came out... Wow. October of 05. Holy cow. So it was a 10-year game. That's a 10-year-old game. Dude. Or, like, or I guess almost a 10-year-old game. Just about. But, oh, that's so weird to think about. That's still when Toonami existed. Toonami. <laughs> when, like, oh. the old version of Toonami existed. Wait a second. According to this, it came out... Yesterday. What? It came out in Japan after it came out in North America. Really? Really? And then Australia, and then Europe. I thought it was a Japanese. Yeah, that's what it was. That's yeah, what it's it's weird. Who, who made it? Who? A genius. Deva uh, yeah. Oh, Team Ico. What am I thinking? Uh, Japan Studio. Oh, there's another reason to get a PS4 if they're gonna do it for the PS4. Last Guardian. If they ever come uh, out with Last Guardian. Dude, I love I love like seeing in Game Informer the farce issue where they re do reviews on uh, like Half Life Three and. I feel like Half Life Three is not going to be great, and the reason is because it's got so much hype built up over it. It's not going to live up to it. I feel like I feel like it's got that issue that uh, they waited too long. <laughs> that um, 
FNAF. What's the game? Duke Nukem Duke Forever Nukem. did. So, like, that's a weird thing, too. Like, cause, yeah. Well, because two examples of games that had decades, or I guess a decade of development. StarCraft, Starcraft 2, 2 and Duke Nukem Forever. Yeah. Polar opposite of the spectrum. Because StarCraft yeah. 2 is great. great. Duke Nukem Forever is not... It's super campy and it's not good. Not even the good kind of camp. Like yeah. Metal Gear Solid 3 <laughs> camp. It's just bad. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 3, is that like... I think that's number two on my favorite games of all time. It's so good. Oh yeah, that was another thing I was going to ask mm. each of you. Your top five video games of all time. Shoot, let's do this. Oh. Top five for me. Uh, in, the, it, what, in, in particular order or no particular order? Uh, I don't think in a particular order. Okay, Shadow of the Colossus, Dark Souls. Um... I think we're going to share a lot of games. I'm not. <laughs> I'm debating. I think I put Modern Warfare 1 in my top 10, not necessarily my top 5. Because it it brought a lot of really cool things to the table. Yeah. And it's the reason that a lot of games are trying to have story now and they're shooters and they don't need to. Because Modern Warfare did it great. Modern Warfare is a very important game. It's very, yeah. Uh, even Modern Warfare 2 is very important. It's my favorite Call of Duty. It's, like, it's not as... Story-wise, I think the first one was better. Second one, though, it brought up the action more, and I feel like yeah. that makes it more fun to play. It it felt like, it reminds me of the difference between Gears 1 and 2. I really like Gears a lot. Mm -hmm. Gears 2 is everything I like, but it's just the next level. So that's why Gears mm -hmm. 2 is my favorite Gears game. Right. It's like, Interesting. Modern Warfare would go in top 10, not top 5. Sure. Uh, that's another game that was Well, what I'm curious about is, like, if you list off your top five, do all those games have, like, one thing in common? Ooh, Shadow and a Call of Duty game? No. <sighs> I think, I think like, they just have something that appeals cathartically is the reason they'd yeah. be in the top five. Like, they Super scratch good. certain kinds of itches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of other games. I know there's other games, but I just I can't think of, like... Modern Warfare came out in late 2007. That's that's bizarre. Because it still holds up. Really. <gasps> the sniper level in Modern Warfare 1. Just freaking fantastic. So good. <laughs> and they uh, never matched it. According to this, um, Harry Gerkerson Williams did the music for Modern Warfare. The first one? Yeah. That's weird. Because well, the second one was... Uh, yeah, second one was Hans Zimmer, because I have that soundtrack. Uh, third one was Brian Tyler, who's been doing a lot of them now. Like, he did the music for Assassin's Creed 4 and Far Cry 3. Um, I can totally see Harry Gregson Williams doing the theme, though, because it sounds very much him. This game feels very Ratchet and Clank right now. Because well, why? Because guns. Hmm. Um... But something that I really liked. Modern Warfare 2. I don't know if Brutal Doom would count, but Brutal Doom would be on my top 10. Brutal Doom, I've never even heard of it. Okay, so if you take like the old Doom and you try and play it, it still holds up okay, but it's very old. So this mod called right. Brutal Doom <laughs> ups the gore and ups the gameplay and makes it really fast. And it puts in modern trends that mm. were good. And so it puts new life into that really old game from when I was a child, and it makes it super fun to play. Uh, Modern Warfare 2 came out November 10th of 09. I remember when the kids at school were talking about it, and they, the trailer came out, and they were like, it looks so good. Yeah, I remember being at, what was I? I, gra I was a sophomore in high school, and I was in class, and we were in a, what kind of class was it? It was like a... Pottery. News, like current events. Cur yeah, current events. Current events class, and we were. I can't remember what we were talking about. We we're talking about like. Oh shoot! When did uh, Cataclysm come out? Uh, because I brought up the fact that uh, wow, Cataclysm broke records for like sales of game in the first whatever amount of days, and. Modern Warfare 2 got brought up because it like came out the day before. Mm -hmm. And I remember this girl 
that I knew, she was like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired of hearing about Call of Duty. Hmm. Because my boyfriend won't shut up. About it. It's so good. It's so good, though. <laughs> um, wow. See, I can think of top tens. I can't think of top fives. Saints Row 4, I kind of want to put, like, a ten. Because it did humor really well, and it it had a really cool balance between, like, customization, so you felt like your character was yours, but your character was still able to surprise you with the lines that come out of his mouth. Yeah, I was a junior in that current events class because Cataclysm came out December? Oh, yeah. December of 2010. I remember when Cataclysm was a huge deal. It totally changed the game, which I don't know. I tried getting into WoW, I couldn't. The Cataclysm. I hate MMOs. The Cataclysm trailer is still my favorite. Just WoW trailer. Blizzard, Blizzard trailers in general, I feel. <laughs> They're kind of ridiculous. Like, why can't they be an in house movie studio? Them and Val <laughs> would be really good at doing that. Mm -hmm. Like, if a, if Blizzard were to make a movie, I'd pay to Isn't see there that. a Warcraft movie thing in I, development? I think there is. And I know this isn't an Assassin's Creed movie in development. And the big thing about that was Ubisoft was like, okay, we'll let you do it, but we want to have a lot more control over the it. The Ratchet and Clank movie is Which a, I feel like is a France. good idea. Really? Yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, that is coming out. Uh, Sly Cooper had a teaser trailer for a movie. Yeah. Which looked cool. Like, I want to watch it. Murray looks weird, though. Uh, Sly has whiskers. I mean, oh, that's so weird. Mm. And pants. And pants. Uh, okay, what are my... What's my top five? Let's go with top ten. Because I think like if we go with top ten first, take me longer. Like, that'll help figure out top five. Because um, that's easier to come up with than top five. Let's see. I think I already have my top five, though. Uh, Shadow... Of the Colossus. Shoot. Shadow the Hedgehog. Number one. <laughs> Number one. Not here. Shadow. <laughs> I am Shadow. Ambivalence. Uh, I'm ambivalent towards good and evil. Shadow. MGS3. I am Shadow. Bioshock. Oh, yeah. Bioshock. Um, Journey and Dark Souls. In no particular order. I'm just saying. Except for Shadow. For me. My favorite. The weird thing is, Shadow the Hedgehog is actually my fourth favorite Sonic game. Just because it's such a weird <laughs> sentence. Because yeah. it has story. Does it, though? It I has mean, story. I didn't say it was good. I. It has how many stories? Like six different stories? It, it has, has ten different endings. Oh I feel like it has story Not including in the, the same way ending. a ransom note with different fonts and letters can be considered a paperback <laughs> novel. That's really That's funny. Just everything can be meshed together, okay. and you can call it a story, but it's... Okay, I'm going to do my top five games. Kill the president! <laughs> Barry, Barry, give me the gun! I need to, I need to, I need to shoot the president! Ugh. Maynard, Maynard James Keenan. My top five games. Number five is Infamous 2. That's number one. Yeah, that's number five. Okay. Um, number four is, I think, Sonic Adventure 2, just because I love Sonic, and that's my favorite Sonic game. And, um, well, let's not even do battle, I guess. But, um, and number three is Rex and Killing Future Crack and Time. I thought that was your favorite. Because I'm getting there. Okay. Um, because I love Rex and Killing games, that's my favorite Rex and Killing game. Mm -hmm. Um, number two is Skyward Sword, because I love Zelda, and it's my favorite Zelda game. <laughs> There's a trend here. There's a trend. <laughs> and number one is The Legend of Spyro, Dawn of the Dragon. Oh, yeah. A game that not many people care about, but. Those, I think the, those that do care about it actually really like it, but anyway, the real, the reason I love it so much is because it's like, it's an E-rated God of War. What? You know? When you say that, I just think, what? The, yeah, it's like, what, what does that, that even mean? mean? What, what does that? it sound like? Well, it's, it's, it's like when they tried to make the Bioshock movie, and they, the people, whoever was going to direct it, the, the studio was like, well, you should make it PG-13. He's like, uh, no. well, I'm not going to do it then, because you can't do that with Bioshock. Nope. It's not PG-13 material. Also, why is it that like, every popular video game is ready to end? <laughs> like, I just think because, that's interesting. Well, look at it this way. If you if you look at human history, well, I guess American <laughs> history. More of curiosity. Here's the thing. You look at American history, and you look at the different time frames, you can kind of equate that to phases in a single person's life. So, like, 
you know, the more childhood optimism of like the early. So I guess we're getting years. towards the end of time. The the seventies were more like the teenage rebellion years, and the eighties were more like that too. Now we're in sort of the college phase. <laughs> if you look at games, that's kind of the way they're headed to. Like they started out being kids things, and kids were the people that played these. So the games were more kiddish. I like yeah. Little Big Planet. The the games that we had when we were growing up started being more like rated T, because that's they were getting older. Like, they were becoming uh, teens. It's like the change. So many of the games were like the uh, Jack and Dax was T. Like a lot of the games that were coming out, Jedi Outcast. It's like the um, difference between Sly Cooper and Infamous. Like they're made by the same company, and different. they're pretty similar. Well, kind of. I mean, I don't know, but they're just Infamous is more grown up. Yeah. Well, like, and that's why now everything is M because the gamers that were playing Nintendo games and Sega games back in the day are now old enough to be mm -hmm. able to want more out of their games, to it's, want more adult yeah. stuff. It's such an interesting trend. And now, like, we're getting to the to that more, Damn. arguably more mature <laughs> point than, like, because I don't know if you guys remember that trend, like, not too long ago, where everything was sort of mature in that juvenile kind of way. Like, everything was dark and edgy. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like how comic book heroes were for a little bit, and they were not very good at dark energy. Like Daredevil with Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner. The, you know, that, that I've been Oscar watching, bait of a movie. I've been watching... Uh, Oscar bait? <laughs> I've been watching Daredevil on Netflix. That, it's so good. That is a good <laughs> show. I hear good things. Here's, I'll put it this way, because I don't know if you ever saw the movie. That is an interesting sentence. Good. I hear good things. Um, but the first 60 seconds of the first episode of Daredevil, was able to convey the origin story ten times more effectively, better than the movie did in that's about funny. 20 minutes. Yeah. That's like, funny. 60 seconds was all it took, and you're like, oh, okay. I watched the first 66, quote-unquote 60 seconds, of House of Cards, and now I really want to watch that show. I've, I've heard good things about it. Like, TV's getting way better now. TV's getting good. Because they have to compete with the cinema. And it's oh, yeah. like Netflix and HBO shows. Like daytime, like ABC and NBC daytime television, or not daytime, like primetime television. I mean, it's good, but like again, when you make a thing for everyone, you make a thing for no one. Like just a decade ago, TV sucked. Like it was all reality shows, really cheap, not yeah, good stuff. And more. now, like AMC, HBO, Netflix, Hulu. Yeah, like it's insane. <laughs> yeah, the more specific, it's like. What I've come to learn, well, I'm, I'm going to school for theater, so what I've learned is that in entertainment, the more specific you are, typically the better it is. Because you're focused. Yeah. Like you're more focused on you. So I'm going to say something that's sounding like it's changing the subject. Sure. Because it is. Oh, um, okay. That would explain so, it. <laughs> well, what do you just, know, David? It's going back to a previous, like when I was listing my top five games, yeah. my favorite video game of all time is Legend of Spyro Dawn of the Dragon. One of the things in particular about that game that I really like is from a gameplay standpoint you can kind of just do whatever you want and I'm not talking like Skyrim like go wherever you want or do whatever mission you want I'm talking like physical abilities for the character it's like anything that you think you ought to be able to do as a dragon you can do like you can do different types of melee moves you can block you can dodge you can fly whenever you want which is fun that's great um, and it's co-op so you can share the adventure you know is that the game that we played together uh, for like a brief moment yeah oh really it's actually, I did it as my very first Let's Play on Lightning Gamers. Metal Gear Solid 3 was good at that, anyway. too. Uh, yeah. I like, just, at, at, at being mechanically deep, Yeah. like, anything uh, you, yeah. you, can, you can catch things to eat them. You can use them as distractions for guards. You can keep them until the end of the game and anything, leave them carry, and then use them later. <laughs> anything you think your character ought to be able to do, you can do. Yeah, intuitive gameplay is one of, it's just so satisfying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, in this world, as a human being, like, nothing, few things hold a candle to, I think I, I'm, like, starting out playing a game, and I think, you know, it'd be cool if I hit this button, and I did this, and it works, and I happen, and I just, that, it works. S strange just, thing is, just the Metal Gear games, like, 2 and 3 were really good at that. It's funny, though, Sonic Lost World, I think, kind of does that, but a lot of people don't like that game, and it's probably because they couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Like all the secret moves and stuff, because the game has like no tutorial. Well, and it's just it's just interesting. I think I think now because a lot of people bash on tutorials and games, but I think they're so becoming tricky. they're becoming a lot more of a must just because games are getting so complex. complex. You compare it to NES days, you have 
arrows and two buttons. Mm -hmm. yep. You can figure that out. But if you try going to, like, say, Dark Souls and doing that, you can't do it. Like, mm -hmm. you have to have a tiny, at least a tiny little tutorial. It's, Portal has the best. I remember back in the day, I would used to watch... Yeah. I remember back in the day, I used to watch gameplay videos of games I was looking forward to, and watching it and thinking to myself, man, this looks kind of complex, I don't know if I'm going to be, ha be able to handle these controls, oh no, <laughs> but then I play it for like a minute, and I'm like, okay, I, I got it. You know, it's just, you just have to play it, um, see what you think. Games that really do that well are, like... Some, there's some games where it's like, you play it a lot, and you totally get how to play it, and you totally get past the learning curve, then you bring it to someone else, and they don't know how to play it's like, whoa, yeah. I just realized like, this game is hard to play. Important. Well, like, that's, that's why Portal, Portal did of. it great, because like its first like its its first level set yeah. is really good at just slowly introducing, like, okay, figure out what you've got to do. Guess what? That's one of the mechanics you're going to have to figure out for this game. And it's so... And you, you're in a controlled environment, and you learn it, and you're like, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. And it, you're still just playing the game. It doesn't say now you have to play. And that's one yeah. thing, and that's how it works. One of the box. gaming, one of the cardinal sins of gaming, is when you teach your teach the player how to play your game through text boxes. That's always awful. It's yeah. never good. It's one of those few. You're just saying. It's one of those like, few instances that something is exclusively bad. Because you don't want to read. No, <laughs> I just want to do it. Let me do it and yeah. learn by well, doing it. What if the text box doesn't pause the game? I mean, it's still a text box. That's even worse because things are still like happening. Dark Souls even has that, but that's more understandable because it only happened one time. Yeah. And you're like okay, and they use a system that's already integrated into the game in a clever way. Scout to Like they spy. use the message system as opposed to having dedicated text boxes pop up, stop the game, stop the flow. Uh, the they Last of Us is on. guilty of that. Yeah. Text boxes. It teach. does that. But then, you know, like, how true. else are you gonna? How else are you gonna do it? Like, you feel like, depending on how your game works, you can kind of write yourself into a corner with tutorials. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Portal's mechanics are simple and intuitive enough that you just have to make a set of levels for it to work, and you can figure it out. But Last of Us has so many variables happening with, like, the stealth and the combat and what certain items do. Yeah. Like, one game... That'd be hard. One company in particular that I think handles uh, difficulty curves pretty well is Insomniac. Particularly this game. You know, like, it I gradually it difficulty gets difficulty. harder and it's fair. I, th I, I always enjoy analyzing the paradox of good, like, the 2D Marios are really good at, uh, they all, they're all constantly throwing something new at you, mm -hmm. which is yeah. refreshing and it's good for gameplay. But there's always the paradox of um, teach them what they need to know in the first couple levels and then everything is fine after that. Mega Man right. was really good at that on a per level basis. Just oh, because, yeah. like, yeah, Aaron, Aaron, Eager Raptor oh, yeah. videos. <laughs> yeah. Like, show them what they're doing in a safer environment, then throw the challenge at them because now they know what they're going to yeah. face. And if they fail, it's their fault. Yeah. Because it's not like they didn't tell you. Dark Souls does that really well. Oh, yeah, it does. Um, like, they start, they, every boss, well, except for a couple of them, which are kind of cheap and stupid, but most of them start off at a distance. And so you have time to react, so you have time to say, okay, what are their yeah. attack sets? It's always the best feeling, it's just, Shout out the he's coming toward me, what am I going to do? Um, um, apply my gold pine resin. Dodge! <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, boss starting out at a distance, and then go kill it. Can Shout out the Colossus. Except for the one in the Undead Asylum, which sucked, and I hated it so much. That's the one where the floor caves in. And then you have to fight a worse version of the first boss. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that All fight right. sucks. <laughs> that fight's rough. I... Oh, my gosh. Dark as we As we talk, Dark Souls is moving up my list of... We need to have that as a background to play for this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Because I feel like... Next one. Oh, so good. I've got Dark Souls. Um, All right, Dark well... Souls. Did you ever... I'm sure you did. You did the thing where you found the doll. Yeah. And you went through the painting. Okay, my first playthrough, I never did that. Because I didn't go and kill uh, what's his face? How do you get that the son of Gwyn. Son you you go Gwyn. to the undead asylum. Oh. And, and you go back to yeah. the cell where you started at, and that's where the doll is. Oh yeah. And that's oh man yeah like I didn't go to the painted world and I didn't go to the Artorias thing because I didn't have the DLC at the time. I love the painted world because it's so different, 
And it's a really good way to implement a, that drastically different of a level in that world. Yeah. And uh, at the end, when you get to that lady, I love how it's just a choice of fighting her. Yeah. See, that's that was something that was really rough in Demon Souls, was there was this boss fight. And because you're trying to collect all these, you know, the demon souls to go and uh, satiate this giant monster thing. Mm. Well, but I think we might want to wrap it up here. So, closing points for our audience. Games, games are, are good. Fun. Games are games. Make them smart. <laughs> Don't make them stupid. Do it better. You have the power. But <laughs> <laughs> All right, well... That's that. Thanks. Till next time, when we're going to play Dark Souls. Yeah. Or Demon Souls. Or not Dark Souls 2. Not Dark Souls 2. No thanks. I'm good. I'm great. Um, that's not. Try to board off the jump and then you... Oh, you uh, don't. Uh, I need blood. Oh, uh, oh, oh, weapon your phone. Oh, oh, it's broken face. Ow. <laughs> yeah. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, oh, 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 God. Oh, I put him oh, down. Oh, hold your entire oh, lower hat. Whoa. Break it down. Oh, my God. Why is this thing? Oh, my God. Did you know? I'm a skier. Oh, my God. She's... Oh, oh, no. What? Whoa. Oh. <laughs> okay. So many things. Yeah. You are aiming so many things. Hold on. Okay, ready? Oh, oh yeah, like a pro. Nice. Uh, oh.